All right, well, it's time to get to work. I've got a RAR V video here that I'm editing. Very nice. Got the generator running. We got the clock going. Got my toilet paper, always necessary. But what I'm missing is coffee because I've ran out of coffee. I think, you know, I also got the colored lights as well. Very beautiful. But I think that it is time to make some coffee. I'm going to show you how it's done with the amazing French presses. Let's take a look. Please ignore the dirty dishes. I will do them eventually when I'm not working, but I need to get some work done. I need coffee. I have two French presses here. How do they work? So, step number one, get your coffee. I like to use Walmart coffee because it's cheap, but it's good. In one French press, it came with this little scoop. You want to put five of these scoops of coffee in there. So I like to fill it up a little heaping spoonful. One, two, three, four, five. Same with the other one. I drink a lot of coffee, that's why I have two of them. One, two, three, four, five. Now another reason I have two of them is because I like my coffee cold. When you make coffee in a French press, you're supposed to let it sit for 20 hours to brew when you're doing cold brew. Now I let it sit for 20 hours if I can, but I found that even after like 15 minutes, it's usually perfectly fine to drink. But you know, I'm not the expert here. So we got our coffee grounds in here. Now the reason that I use French presses is because they don't use electricity. And in the RV, that's great. I, won't, I don't have to run the generator to use these. It's all powered by human power. So now we're gonna get our Brita filter and we're gonna take some water that we got earlier and we're gonna put it in here. Whee! And we're just gonna filter the damn water. Always wanna use filtered water because otherwise it will make your coffee taste very weird if you don't use filtered water. Let that sit for a little bit and filter and then we'll come back. All right, the water is filtered. So we're just gonna pour. You just pour all the way till it reaches basically the top. Very nice. And now for the second one, and we are gonna need some more water. So I'll go get some more and put it here in the filter. Let that filter and come back to it. And now we can pour the second one all the way up to the top. Good. Now I'm gonna use my finger and I'm just gonna stir the coffee grounds up in here. Give it a lovely, nice, lovely, nice stir here. Just to saturate all the coffee grounds, you know what I mean? Rinse my finger off in the sink. Okay. Now this is the most important part, the plungers. The plungers, look at this. This goes in and you basically let it sit at the top for 20 hours and then when it's ready, you plunge it down, push all the coffee grounds to the bottom and all the coffee comes through the filter up so that you're left with liquid up here, coffee grounds down here, if that makes any sense. So you place that on that one and same deal with this one over here. And now we're just gonna, we're just gonna let them kind of hang out for 20 hours or so in the refrigerator. Amazing, I like to keep them right up at the top there. Yeah, that light sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Right up there. When they're done, then they go into this thing. That's where I store my excess coffee. I have two of them because it takes 20 hours to brew. So, you know, can't live without coffee if you're gonna work late at night like I do. So now it's time for us to press the coffee. I've waited a few minutes, probably not enough, but this is definitely a process that is interesting to watch and I, I want some coffee. So we're literally just gonna take our hands and press down on this little plunger here. And as you can see, maybe the coffee grounds are starting to be pushed down to the bottom. Maybe you can see that, I don't know. You see the, the plunger right there, the coffee grounds, they're, they're being pushed down to the bottom. And what's left above it is coffee. This all requires no electricity and it's cold brew. I'm only gonna press it halfway because I don't want the whole thing just yet. I just need one cup of coffee right now. We just take it and just pour it in. Just like that. And the rest of this we put in the fridge to continue brewing. As always, can't forget our lovely Snickers coffee creamer from Coffee Mate. Amazing. Not a sponsor, but my god, it's so good. I love it. This is coffee right here. But really quick, before we continue on with the adventure, I'd like to talk about today's sponsor. And that's me, my Patreon. I do have a Patreon for this channel specifically. It's linked in the description down below. If you enjoy what you're watching, your support would mean the world. It's a brand new Patreon. I have yet to really flesh out all the perks and everything, but I'll be doing that soon. So there's more rewards coming. Just stay tuned for that. But right now, really, this is a great way to help fund my adventures. If you like watching this content, your support would mean the world to me. So please go check it out. And also I do have social media for this channel, Twitter and Instagram. Those are in the description as well. If you want to follow along, I tweet occasionally. I, I post to Instagram occasionally. That's another way to to keep up to date with what I'm doing in the RV. So go check it out. Links in the description down below to everything, including the Patreon. Back to the video. Mm, so good. So you might've seen this, this light that I was using earlier. It's really cool. It's just, you flip it on like a light switch and it's bright as hell, man. On the back, what's interesting is that it says, to wear safety goggles during use. <laughs> what the hell? I don't know, but that's that's weird. But what I do see is that there's Velcro on the back. So 
if I remove this this little Velcro strap right here, theoretically speaking, and it's also magnetic it looks like as well, which is pretty cool. If that's Velcro, I should be able to stick it to the ceiling of my RV and have a movable light that I can put anywhere. Let's try it. No freaking way it works. Look at this. So this is the room without the light on. This is it with the light on. Look at look at the difference. The the light difference is just incredible. That is amazing. the Salton Sea last night. I spent the night here at, at Noah's house and now I'm in my car and uh, I'm ready to make the drive to my RV and swap my vehicles. I don't know that I've shown you guys this yet, but yeah, to make the RV lifestyle possible, what I do is I have an RV storage unit where I park whichever vehicle I'm not using. So right now my RV's parked there and I'm gonna go swap my car for the RV and leave the car there, take the RV out so I can, you know, get my work done. But there's a couple issues with the RV that I need to fix. So we'll deal with that maybe today or tomorrow. Let's just make the drive. It's a pretty long drive, about 30 minutes. I will see you there. guys well here it is it's right here let's get it out of here shall we all right I ran a little experiment and we're gonna see if it worked or not I'm very curious all right I left this on we're gonna see if it's cold it is not that's awesome well I know that I can't trust that unless unless the propane is empty let's check it out let's see and as you can see it's definitely not <laughs> That's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Well, that just means all my all my stuff has gone bad now. I gotta get that gotta get this figured out, and I I can no longer have anything in here that that can actually go bad. It has to all be like soda and stuff that can survive warmer temperatures from now on. One more thing to add to the list of things that I need to get checked out there. Well, that's bad news, but we gotta push forward here. I'm gonna take everything from my car, put it in here that I'll need, and then we can hit the road. this thing ready to drive. With that, I think we're ready to move this thing. Well, we're ready to go almost, but I want to show you one thing really quick here. I've got one door in here that has trouble opening. The The handle just does not open anymore, so I have to keep it open because if I close the door there, it will not open back up. The handle just, just does not work no matter how hard I try. So I'm going to go to Lowe's or Home Depot and see if I can find a door handle to replace this one with. I've never replaced a door handle in my life. Let's see if we, if we can find one. I don't even know if RVs use the same door handles as houses or if it's different, we're going to find out. Well, I've arrived at Home Depot. I don't know if you can see. I am at Home Depot, you can kind of see. My door handle's just as, about as good as gone, so I might as well just take it off. I don't know how to take off a door handle, but there are screws. I'm just gonna unscrew them and see what the hell happens here. So, wish me luck with that. Let's see what we can figure out here. The screw is too long to come out. All right, so I don't know if you can see this, but this screw, when you unscrew it, it's too long to actually come out. The, the handle's blocking it from coming out. So I, I do not understand at all. Mm -hmm. 